Depends on the cost of the lease? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's now by not time, an added on cost. No. No, so it's, you know, you got your whole system cost. It's probably going to lead to a lease cost that's more like $100 a month when you do ground mounts, at least the last time I did it. Mm. Although, although again, you can adjust that by how much money down you put. Mm. Mm. So, um, so now, the prepaid lease. I did one of these for my, yes? I just wanted to clarify, um, since I don't know how these these are connected to the roof, um, what kind of difficulties you encountered when you need to re replace your asphalt shingles? Okay, so here's a, here's a typical roof rack. This is a aluminum piece with aluminum foot, and this is lagged into your rafters. So what goes under here, first we uh, drill a pilot hole, we put in some roof cement, we put a butyl rubber seal under the foot, and then uh, lag it into the rafter. Okay, so we've done, there's probably tens of thousands of these connections out there that we've done over the years, no leaks. Now, but if you want to replace your roof, obviously you're going to have to move these. So, so that's, I've actually done that on my own roof. You know, I took them down and uh, did, did my roof, put it back up. We have, in one case, gotten the roofer to, we, we came and disconnected the system, and then the roofer moved the, the feet and the panels, put on the new roof, and then put the panels back where they found them. So we did get the roofer to do that uh, at least once. But a lot, but most of the time we'll come around, you know, we're the ones that come around and take them down and put them back up. You gotta redo your roof. One good thing about having solar panels on your roof though is that it does protect the roof <coughs> from the sun. Right? I mean, that's what ruins your south roof, right? <laughs> Hot sun on it. So it'll last longer. Uh, what we do, when we do a site visit, we'll look at things like that. We'll look at, well, what's the condition of your roof? Uh, is there shade on your roof or not? We want to have a place where there's little to no shade. Um, what do the wire runs look like? Things like that. Question. So the interest rate on the leases varies from, I believe, 6% to 10%, depending on the term and the, and the credit score. So I think that's, that's what it works out to. Uh, and so the NYSERDA incentive does not go to the person that it, it does indirectly. You know, it, it's, uh, the, the way the NYSERDA incentive has always worked for us is that the NYSERDA sends us that and we take that off of the uh, cost of the system. So with the lease it's the same thing except now we're going to essentially give it to SunPower and they're going to take it off of it. So ultimately that amount of money with no, nobody takes anything out of that, all of that incentive ultimately goes to you in the form of a discount. Okay. And I see it as $1.50 per watt right now. With, with up to seven, for residential, the limit is seven kilowatts that you can get an incentive for. Now you can build a bigger system than that, but you can only get an incentive for up to seven kilowatts. So seven thousand times a dollar fifty, that's the maximum incentive for well, residential. What what's the average uh, consumption for a household? Is it above seven kilowatts? No, actually most people can do most can do the majority of their load with between five and seven kilowatts of P V. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not doing electric heating. Mm -hmm. If you're doing electric heating, then probably not. You know, then you need something bigger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about the incentive for business? So for businesses and nonprofits, so businesses can get a, an incentive dollar fifty a watt up to fifty kilowatts, and uh, uh, nonprofits can get a dollar fifty a watt up to twenty five kilowatts for bigger systems for them. By the way, I want to urge you that if you want to go solar, please sign up ASAP because come the end of May, the incentive is going to go down and it's going to keep going down every couple of months because the demand is really heating up, the NYSERDA incentive. Okay, so it already went down in February. Man, of this year, right. Probably it's gonna go down to $1.25 a watt because in February, they lowered it from $1.75 a watt to $1.50 a watt. So I believe their rules say that if they're oversubscribed for two months in a row, then they've gotta lower it 25 cents. Well, now it's, now it's spring <laughs> and those people over there in the Hudson Valley, they are pouring applications into NYSERDA. <laughs> right. So uh, uh, act now. <laughs> the tax credits are also not completely safe. The, uh, we have the federal tax credit, technically we have it through 2016. I mean, that's, that's the current end 
date, 2016, which we thought was, okay, we can count on that. But now Congress is attacking that and trying to roll it back. Okay, so we hope that doesn't happen, but it could. Yeah. Um, Right. <coughs> the funding, yes. So if the insurance is dropping, that has nothing to do with the state of New York? Well, there's, there's the whole pot of money, and then there's how much money each, each watt gets. Okay? Mm -hmm. Chances are, and the way this has always worked in the past, if more money became available, they never raised the incentive per watt. But they could fund more systems. Okay, so what that may mean is that when that money becomes available, it'll be a longer period of time between when they have to lower it, so, which would be great. You know, instead of every two months, you know, we may end up going every four or six months before they have to lower it, which would be great.